I have survived for 1500 days in my season two hardcore world and today is finally the day where I start over. This season two world is still by far the best world I've ever had. And it was the world that allowed me to grow the most on YouTube. So obviously I am very grateful to have had this world. I will be uploading one more video on this world to give it a proper send off and also to provide a world download link to anyone who wants it. But for now, let's get started with season three of Hardcore Minecraft. Allow me to welcome everyone to Hardcore Minecraft Season 3. Looks like we got a pretty decent spawn here. Got some big mountains around us. That looks insane. All right, I don't even know what to say about that. That looks ridiculous. But we're in a new world and this feels so weird. Playing Hardcore Minecraft from the beginning again. I need to remember, I don't have totems. I don't have netherite armor. I could die really easily. I guess let's just start getting all the basic tools I need in the beginning. You just got coconut mold. Got some basic tools and a couple other things that I'm gonna need right away. Now it's time to actually explore the spawn area. I do see some cows over there. I should probably kill them first, but it looks like we have some cool mountains nearby, which is amazing. I don't really wanna move too far away from spawn. I usually run really far away because I am insanely indecisive when it comes to choosing a house location. But I wanted to make a little challenge for myself to live near spawn. And this seed actually is gonna allow me to do that, I think pretty easily because this area already looks sick. Like look at this mountain over here, man. I really hope there's a plane or something over there or just some other biome that I can use the build in where that's in the backdrop because that looks insane so does this over here all right we got some we got some options also got some nice early game iron so we can make a shield which is huge I'm not gonna make one right away but when I go caving in this episode I can make a shield and hopefully not die I also went ahead and made a smoker <laughs> I feel like that pisses some people off but you know what? They're not hard to make and they cook food like really fast. I think it's worth it. While I'm just running around here though, let me talk about the goals I have for this episode. The first goal and the main goal is to build a starter house. I feel like that's just a pretty simple goal to have in the first episode of a new Minecraft series. My next goal then is to get a full set of iron armor, which really shouldn't be difficult to do. And it'll definitely keep me alive a lot longer. We have three sheep right here. This is perfect. Thank you so much for your service. I do not have to die overnight now. There are then two more things that I would like to get done in this episode. That is finding diamonds and starting a renewable food source. It always feels good sleeping your first night in hardcore Minecraft, I gotta be honest. But let's get started by trying to find a house location. I'm hoping I don't have to look for too long. I feel like a future project in this world has to be me making a village on the side of this like cliff. I feel like I could do something really cool with that. I make like a whole bunch of connecting bridges and like houses that are inside the mountain. That could look really interesting. But I'm going to sail around for a little while just to see what the immediate surrounding area looks like. And then maybe we'll come back here if I can't find anything cool. Now this shipwreck could be really useful for me. Very quick way to find some iron and diamonds potentially. Also some moss, even though I found a bunch of lush caves already. No diamonds, but 11 iron's not bad. I think I've settled on a location. It's not too far away from spawn. Spawns just over this way, like 500 or so blocks, which isn't too far when you consider I can just take a boat right over there. I knew I wanted a spot where I was really close to an ocean so I could build a dock eventually. And I think this spot works pretty well. Once I clear out these trees right here, this is gonna be a lot of open space. And this absolutely has to be the fastest I've ever found the area I plan on building. I absolutely never do this this quickly. I'm gonna clear out some of this area and then I think we're gonna do some mining. Cause I wanna get some better tools before I start gathering the materials from my starter house. Some of the trees in the area have been cleared out now and got a little bit of wood out of it. And I also threw down this chest and organized it just a little bit, really nothing special. But I do wanna start preparing for going into a cave now. And in order to do that, let me go ahead and craft some new tools. Boom, bam, bop. And I also already crafted a shield, so we have that covered. I can also craft a little bit of armor and a bucket. Bucket's super important and that little bit of armor might help. Bada bop, boom, pow. I think we are prepared to go underground now. 
Got a shield, got some new iron tools, got a whole bunch of torches and some food. Hopefully I don't die. All right, so this cave goes really deep already, which is exactly what I want. I wanna get down to the deep slate level down there, but I saw some iron up here. So let's grab this first and then we can go all the way down to deep slate level and hopefully find some diamonds. Should I just go for it? I might just jump all the way down. Surely I live this, right? I do. I'm amazing. And look what we found already. The first diamonds of the world. It's three, we can make a pickaxe. Let's go. I would love to find at least two more diamonds, just so we know we have enough for an enchanting table and a pickaxe. And I never really know how to edit myself mining, so let's just throw it to a mining montage. That was a really successful mining trip. I really didn't get that many materials in that one session, but we did get five diamonds. So that's all that really matters. I'm not trying to overstay my welcome in the caves. I'll tell you that much. Before I head off to the mountains to go collect some more iron, let me get closer to finishing off my iron set of armor. So we already have a chest piece. So let's just go ahead and craft the leggings. And I suppose we can also craft the boots. Now we just need three more pieces of iron and we can finish this off. And while I'm over there, I might as well get some coal because we only have 21 left and you know, obviously your boy needs coal. All right, so I've made it back to spawn. The mountains are up there behind me and I have also gathered a little bit of iron. Enough so I can finish off my set of iron armor. So that is another one of my goals checked. I'm really close, hold on. <laughs> that is another one of my goals checked off. Now I'm gonna chill in the mountains for a little while and gather up a butt ton of iron and a butt ton of coal. And hopefully I don't die in powdered snow. That would be really tragic. <laughs> Now, hopefully that mining trip can fuel my iron and my coal supply for a little while. I ended up with around three stacks of iron and then probably like four and a half stacks of coal considering what I have in the furnaces here. It is now time though to gather the materials for my starter house. And full disclosure, I have no idea what my color palette's going to be. I think I'm just gonna gather up a bunch of materials and just kind of wing something. Definitely not the most optimal way to make a Minecraft video but it's the way I like doing it, all right? So <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. So let me toss it over to me whenever I decide to edit this video. Before I go over all the materials that I gathered, I wanna talk about today's sponsor. It's me, my YouTube channel. More specifically though, the subscribe button. If you wanna click it, if you're liking the video, that would mean a lot to me, that'd be super cool. Also, I wanted to mention that you can become a member on my channel. There is currently only one tier, but it grants you a couple different loyalty badges, and also it'll get you named a block in this world. So if you would like to officially be a part of this world, head to the link down below and become a Shramalam. The name is definitely still questionable. <laughs> Thank you so much, the Shrammy YouTube channel, for sponsoring this video. But let's get back to business, all right? I gotta talk about the blocks that I mined to later put back down in a much cooler shape. We're starting off here pretty simple. I just gathered some cobblestone. I knew I also wanted deep slate, so I decided just to make a staircase going down to that level. And I figured I could just grab the stone along the way. That would probably be enough. So then naturally after the stone, gathered up some deep slate, did this by strip mine in case I found some diamonds, which I did. Found a decent bit of diamonds in this first episode. I usually only find enough for like a diamond pickaxe, but I have enough for an enchanting table and a few other things, so that's pretty nice. After those two stones, I gathered up my favorite wood type in all of Minecraft, which is spruce wood. Pretty much goes well with like every other building block in this game. I just think spruce is so versatile. The best wood type, in my opinion. After the spruce, we gathered up some moss. Definitely another one of my favorite building blocks in this game, just the regular block itself, and then also like the stone mossy variants you can make. 
Very, very nice. I then went over and gathered a crap ton of sand. It was at this point where I kind of figured out my color palette. I knew I wanted to use stone and, you know, just gray blocks for the bottom of the build. And then the top, like the second floor, I knew I wanted it to be sand, sandstone, smooth sandstone, those kind of blocks. After gathering up all the sand, I chopped down a few birch trees that also kind of flows with the color palette of that second floor that I was talking about. Then I realized that I definitely did not have enough spruce wood. So I went back and chopped down more spruce trees, did the same thing with stone definitely did not have enough stone when I was just heading down to the mine so I had to make a little dedicated area to mine out a whole bunch of stone then I realized I forgot to get tough when I was gathering deep slate earlier so I had to go down there and get some of that all right so here are the materials that we just gathered I'm hoping this is enough to complete my entire house I am horrifically bad though at estimating how many blocks I'm going to need. So I am definitely going to need more of something. Now, one of my goals for this episode was to get some sort of a food source. And that's what I would like to work on now. I figured I could just kind of drag a couple cows back here, maybe some sheep or something. And just while I'm building the house, I can breed them every so often. First things first though, I need the wheat to get the cows and the sheep back here in the first place. So I'm gonna clear out a little area over here. Also, I guess gather some flowers along the way. And let's plant down the eight wheat seeds that I have. I also do have one piece of bone meal. So is there a chance this can fully grow? Wow. I actually don't know if there's a chance for that to happen, but it didn't happen there. I will also set up a very basic sugarcane farm. Now I'm definitely going to be making both of these farms look a lot better in the future, certainly automating my sugarcane farm at some point, but you know, you got to start somewhere. While I'm waiting for the wheat to grow, I am going to clear out an area for my starter house. And I think it's going to go up here. A lot of open area, don't really have to clear out much dirt if I'm going to build up here. I just have to clear out all these trees, which isn't a problem because I'll probably use this stuff somewhere in the house. <laughs> so let me take a quick nap and then I'll be chopping. This area is nice and cleared out now. The only thing is like my mine that I was using. I might just cover this up, honestly, which will waste a lot of cobblestone stairs, but I don't really care that much. I also got this composter because I was using shears to gather all the leaves and I can use these leaves to make some more bone meal. That gave me a whopping 11 pieces of bone meal. Massive. You know what though? That is enough to breed some animals, so I will take it. <laughs> Very temporarily, I'm just gonna set up two pens. And we have our first volunteer right here. Get in the pen where you will definitely not be killed. Nope, nobody, nobody tell him, please. <laughs> hey, you look like you want to reproduce. Come with me. That sheep just did a 360 and jumped off the ledge. That was sick. Get this, get this man in phase clan. All right, cow, do you have a friend? Please tell me you have a friend. You do have a friend. Let's go. Hopefully you guys are more than friends. Slowly but surely, we're going to be getting a lot of food. Very tragically though, I only have four more pieces of cooked food. I may have to take a break while I'm building to go find myself some food, but it seems like a good time for me to begin this starter house. So let's cut it to a time lapse. I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. The exterior of the house is pretty much done. I think it turned out pretty cool. I tried to put a bit more detail into the walls and I feel like I accomplished that. I I'm kind of happy with how this turned out. But yeah, there are just a few other pieces of decoration I have to add to this thing. I'll get to that in a second, but let me take you inside because believe it or not, I actually did an interior. Wait, hold, hold on. There we go, not sure what that was all about before. Once you are inside on this first floor, we have a chest area to the left. 
I could have made a lot more storage in here, but I didn't really want to. I don't like having too much storage in my starter house. I just like there being a reason for me to make like a storage building or several storage buildings in the future. So we just have 20 double chests right here. And this is where I'm storing a lot of my wood and my like building blocks and stuff like that. We have a handful of barrels in this corner. And these are all being taken up by some random things, like we have some tools, we got some decoration blocks, we got some mob drops, all that fun stuff. And heading upstairs, we have a small kitchen area with a bunch of extinguished campfires with some different, you know, pieces of food on them. I think this is a pretty cool design, though just displaying some raw meat like this is probably not hygienic, but who cares? We're not going for hygiene. This is Minecraft. Um, this is where I'm storing all of my smelting kind of related items and my light related items. We have some other things I can smelt in there. Back here is a small crafting area. I just have a crafting table and a smithing table. Also a variety of different paintings. This is my favorite one. I like this dude. He's just kind of vibing. Always been a fan of that guy. And then we have the bedroom back here. One simple bed, a couple barrels as well. I don't think there's actually anything in these barrels, but maybe there will be one day. Am I able to make this rain go away? I am not. That's sad. I don't want to work on the rest of this video while it's raining. But back outside here, I wanted to show off another little thing I did. I went around and decorated the outside of the building a little bit more, specifically up here with the roof trim. Kind of just went through and added some fences, some fence gates, and other like supporting beams, I guess, to hold up the rest of the roof. I think it's a pretty cool design. Also allows me to hang some lanterns all over the place. And you know, your boy loves lanterns. I would like to finish off this video though by working on a farm. We have this little crop field over here, but that is not going to cut it. I want to eventually have really large sprawling crop fields in this area. I'm thinking we have our own little farming district somewhere over here. I think that'll be a good spot for the barn eventually and probably like a farmhouse where we can, you know, store some farming villagers. But most aesthetically, this is gonna be the spot we have all of our farmland. I just need to figure out precisely where that's going to go. And then I'm gonna throw down one crop field to end off this video. But let me sleep first because I can finally get rid of the rain. I think the best plan of action is for me just to cut down a lot of trees over here so I can really kind of visualize this area. That zombie was on fire, and he dropped a baked potato. I didn't even know that could happen. The trees are mostly gone now, and I'm getting a much better idea of what this area is going to look like. Also, I brought all the dirt that I have. I don't know if I'm actually gonna use it all, but I'm gonna go through and try to terraform a little bit here to make the land look a little bit less weird. Nothing like a good old terraforming project on episode one. <laughs> Hold on, before we do anything, um, there's a spawner down here. I would love to put a torch over it without getting killed. I don't know if it's skeleton or zombie. I've seen a bunch of each of these mobs down here. It is a skeleton spawner. Oh, that's a lot of skeletons. Hold on, they're all fighting each other though. I think, are we good? We're not good. Let me get out of here. I don't want to die. Please. Please. Oh no. Oh, that was way too close. It is a skeleton spawner. I did light it up, but there's a lot of skeletons down there. That is super nice that this is over here, because not only can we get like unlimited arrows and bones and stuff, but pretty decent source of early game experience. I definitely do not want to go into a cave at the moment. So I'll just stop over there with the torches, but that should be good enough so nothing can spawn. You know what, with all the bones that we have, we might as well try to get this dog. And there we go. We got a best friend. Look at him, I, I love this guy already. We also got a name tag, so we can go ahead and name this dog next episode. So that means what I need from you guys is some name suggestions in the comments for this dog. My boy or girl, doesn't matter. My best friend, that's all that matters. Now that I've been distracted enough, um, let's actually go ahead and terraform some stuff. This isn't gonna be like a huge terraforming project, but definitely some work that needs to be done over here. All right, a little bit of work has been done and I think I like this slope a lot more. It's much more gradual than it was and there are like no holes anymore where as before there were a couple. <laughs> There's still a bunch of work I want to do in this area, like this whole hill back here I might even just eventually get rid of, because I kind of think it looks bad. But that's a project for future Shram. Current Shram is going to make a new axe, chop down all of his spruce wood, and gather a bunch of spruce leaves. Got myself a ton of different building blocks along with all of the crops that I currently have and some water buckets. Now I just need a hoe and we can begin this farm. I'm gonna go around for now and just alternate this pattern. So we're just gonna have a handful of leaves and then a couple fences connecting the leaves. Now I know they don't actually connect to the leaves, but it's fine. Now we have a shape like this. And it's at this point that I would like to kind of run around and sprinkle in some other random spruce blocks. I didn't want to go overkill, so I just sprinkled in a couple barrels and strip spruce logs with trap doors on some of them. And this is basically going to be the final product. I'm just going to go through one more time and add a little bit more height to some of these leaves. But other than that, I think we are done. Of course, though, we still have to put in the actual farm.
And now before I end the video, let's take a look at everything that we have built so far in this world with shaders on. Now that the starter house and the farms are finished, I can confidently check off those goals for this episode. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm going to do my best to go bigger and better for season three. So if you enjoyed season two, you should definitely enjoy this one. Thanks one more time for checking out the video and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.